myself dr r krishna kumar associate professor department of commerce st joseph's college of arts and science autonomous kadalur going to give an overview of employee provident fund introduction as per preamble to the act the epf act is enacted to provide the institution of provident funds pension fund and deposit linked insurance fund for the employee in factors and other establishments the employee provident fund and miscellaneous provision act is a social security legislation to provide for the provident fund family pension and insurance to employees employees has to pay contribution towards the fund employer also pay the equal contribution on these aspects i throw a important aspects of eps is what to provide the social security of the employee in india the government of india will be enacted this act to prevent the employer as well as the employee for the critical situations or some other benefits to the employee definition the employees provident fund and miscellaneous provision act 1952 is an indian labor law that provide social securities benefit to the employee in the organized sector it applies to all establishment of employing more 20 and more people so from this definition it's clear that the epf act will be applicable to the concern to the organization where there is more than 20 employees a worker in a regular basics they have to go for this epf in other aspects if there is employee below 20 if they want to go for epf they have to get a special permission from the governments applicability to the act the employee provident fund act 1952 is applicable from the date of functioning or date of set up establishment provided factory or established employee 20 or more person the act however does not apply to the cooperative society employing less than 50 person and working without the aid of power the central government is empowered to apply the provision of this act to any establishments employing less than 20 person after giving not less than 2 months notice of its intention to do so an establishment of or factory which is not otherwise coverable under this act can be covered voluntarily with the mutual consent of this act so in general as i explained in the previous slide so this can be applicable for the person for the employee who are working more than 20 in numbers then for the cooperative society if it is less than 50 person then it is not applicable for other cases that is the persons who below 20 person they have to go for the voluntary registration with the mutual consent of the employees provident fund act important definitions so here i am going to explain the there are so many definitions can be given in the employee epf act but here i will focus only the most important definition that is the meaning for appropriate government 
basic wages contribution employer and employee let me first define the term appropriate government appropriate government in relation means in relation to those establishments belonging to or under the control of the central government or in relation to an establishment connected with a railway company a major port a mine or an oil field or a controlled industry or in relation to an establishment having departments or branches in more than one state the central government and in relation to any establishment the state government so in general both the central government and state government have empowered to applic- uh, to go for this applicability of the employment act next one basic wages basic wages means all emolument emoluments which are earned by an employee while on duty or on leave or on holiday with wages in either cases in accordance with the terms of the contract of employment and which are paid or payable in cash to him but does not but does not include the following cash value that is the cash value of any food concession any dearness allowances or house rent allowances overtime allowances bonus commission or any other similar allowances payable to the employee in respect of his employment or of work done in such employment next one any presence may be the employer so all these aspects will not be included in the basic wages contribution contribution means a contribution payable in respect of member under a scheme or contribution payable in respect of an employee to whom the insurance scheme is applicable so this can be comes under section 2 subsection 3 sorry subsection c next to an important aspects that is we shall move to the employer definition of employer and employee employer means in a relation to any establishment which is a factory the owner or occupier of the factory including the agent of such owner or occupier the legal representative of a deceased owner or occupier and where a person has been named as a manager of the factory under clause f of subsection 1 of section 7 of the factories act 1948 the person can be so named as employer employee employee means any person who is employed for wages in any kind of work manual or otherwise in or in connection with the work of an establishment and who gets his wages directly or indirectly from the employer and includes any person so this is the uh, important definition of the employer and employee next to and they also define the union of india 1980 lab ic can be defined the this can the government of india by some notification extend the application of act and epf scheme to the following industries which were held that work engaged in the some of the routed manufacture for example bd manufacture for that what they have give some uh, exemption okay that is the act cannot be applicable in the following aspects that is uh, so this 
uh, factories people cannot go, come under the epf that is exempted employees then ex- uh, that means it means an employee to whom a scheme or the insurance schemes as the case may be would but for exemption granted under section 17 have applicable similarly establishment the organization also exempted it means an establishment in respect of which an exemption has been granted under the section 17 from the operation of all or any of the provision provisions of any schemes or the insurance schemes as the case may be similarly they will go for the factory fund insurance fund and manufacture or manufactured process so in this cases they have defined some more exemption for the epf act next one we shall move to the employee provident fund scheme so the employee provident fund scheme in india is a retirement benefit scheme that provide a social security to the employee of a private and public sector it is administered by the employee fund organization the epfo is an autonomous body of the government of india and operates under the ministry of labor and employment so these include the two aspects that is uh, employee pension scheme and employee deposited linked insurance the following are the various act which can be comes under the employee provident fund scheme first one is employees provident fund scheme second one employee pension scheme employee deposit linked insurance scheme employee deposit cum welfare fund scheme employee state insurance scheme employee welfare scheme so in this i will throw some light on the two aspects that is a employee pension scheme and employee deposit linked insurance the employee pension scheme 1995 the employee pension scheme 1995 has been made applicable on 16/11/1995 retrospectively with the effect from 1/4/1993 this new scheme replaced with the sty family pension scheme in 1971 membership every member of the employee provident fund scheme 1952 opted for opted for employee family pension scheme 1971 employee deposit linked insurance scheme so before that in the employee pension scheme there are uh, the membership who are all the membership every member of the epf scheme 1955 are qualified all new entrants of the employee provident fund scheme 1952 will become a member of the employee pension scheme 1995 on compulsory basis employ every employee who ceases to be a member of the employee family pension scheme 1971 during 14/1993 every existing member of the employee provident scheme 1952 not being a member of family pension scheme 1977 has option to become a member of employee pension scheme 1995 it requires the duration members who have died during 1995 1993 to 9 15 11 1995 here in the employee provident schemes the contributions the employee is not required to contribute separately under the employee pension scheme 1995 employer share a provident fund a contribution at the rate of 8.33% is diverted to pension fund every month right so now coming to the so these are the important aspects in the employee pension scheme next we shall come to the 
aspect of employees provident employees or employees deposit linked insurance scheme so here these are the factors which to be included application of the scheme contribution to the insurance fund administrative expenses nomination payment of assurance benefit exemption from the scheme application of the scheme made by the the employees deposit linked insurance scheme 1976 is applicable to all factories establishment to come under the epf regarding the contribution the employers are not the employees are not required to contribution to the insurance fund it include the employee uh, epf scheme itself administrative expenses for this what they have to be charged at the rate of 0.01% nomination facilities available they have to be go for the nominate uh, nominate nominated by the approval of the employee payment assurance benefit in case of death of a member or any amount equal to the average balances in the account of a deceased person during the preceding 12 months or a period of membership whichever is less shall be paid to the person exemption from the scheme last one exemption the exemption from the scheme or the factories establishment which has an insurance scheme confirming more benefits than those provided under the statutory schemes may be granted exemption subject to certain condition so these are the important aspects of the employee deposit linked insurance with this hope i i throw your light on these some of these aspects hope you understand thank you